Welcome back everyone, Happy New Year. It looks like Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man made a stealth comeback in the most confusing place possible. Like what is going on here? I took some digging to find out what's going on, but it seems like it's connected to the Sony Spider-Man spin-off movies that they're doing inside the Venom universe, so we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. There is a lot, a lot of Spider-Man related stuff happening this year. We have three, three Sony Spider-Man spin-off movies set in the Venom universe and that MCU Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man TV series, which is coming at the end of the year. But if it wasn't clear, all the Sony Spider-Man movies that they've been doing the last couple of years are all set inside the Venom universe. They're all on the same planet, with the exception of Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man, Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man. There have been evidence that they might be trying to tie one of those universes to the Venom universe. Like, what if this is all taking place inside Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man's universe? I've done a bunch of videos about that just because there were so many Easter eggs, especially in that Morbius trailer before they cut a lot of that stuff from the movie. So now a lot of that is deleted scenes. But this is what that Morbius post credit scene was all about. It was meant to be happening on that same Earth that Venom takes place on. Then just last week, we all saw Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man show up in the most surprising place. And you were all probably just as confused as me. Like, wait, what? It's great to see him come back. I would love to see him come back in more places, but this kind of doesn't make sense the way they're using the character. If you missed it, you have no idea what's going on. Bad Bunny released a new music video for one of his songs for the new year, and Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man is featured prominently during, like this is Sam Raimi's Spider-Man costume running around. Bad Bunny falls off the building, he saves him, you see him hanging out with them, playing pool, chilling out in his Spider-Man suit. There's like a little tag scene at the end where he sits down on the couch and asks him about his love life. If you don't speak Spanish, what's happening in that tag scene is basically him sitting down with Bad Bunny, asking him, what's up my madman? When is she going to marry you? Basically asking him about the girl earlier in the video that he seemed like he was proposing to. Basically asking him about his love life. Look, like there's just bros commiserating. And as cool as it is to see him come back, this is one of the weirdest places for Sony to let Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man show up. Like, what is he doing here? How does this happen? A lot of you had the theory that this had something to do with the Sony Spider-Man El Muerto movie. So in case you forgot, Sony announced that Bad Bunny was actually going to star in a Spider-Man movie about El Muerto. He's a Spider-Man villain who's only appeared twice in the Spider-Man comics, so he's like a pretty small villain. He was essentially a wrestler who came from a line of wrestlers that passed down a mystical Lucha Libre mask that granted them special powers. During the early 2000s, he fought Spider-Man in a wrestling match set up by J. Jonah Jameson. Spider-Man defeats him, then winds up helping him stop people who were trying to kill him. Then he came back during Marvel's original Civil War event, but that was about it, like those two appearances. Sony was going to do an origin story movie for his character explaining how he got the El Muerto mask from the comics and it sounds like he was originally meant to tie in with that Morbius post credit scene in the MCU Vulture meeting Morbius talking about Spider-Man saying they should put together a new Sinister Six team inside this Venom universe. Has to do with Spider-Man I think. I'm still figuring this place out but I think a bunch of guys like us should team up could do some good. Sony announces the El Muerto movie early last year, but the whole year went by without any real updates on it. Bad Bunny then announces he's doing another big tour. He has a bunch of big music projects that he's working on. And then all of a sudden, Sony announces that they've canceled that El Muerto movie. Like, oh yeah, by the way, that's not happening. Originally, the movie was set to come out this January. Like, that's when they were supposed to actually release the movie. We should have been watching it right now, basically. It sounds like they never cracked the script, like the movie never got that far along in development before they realized it wasn't going to work and Bad Bunny just moved on to other music projects because that's where his big business is. Probably didn't help that Morbius bombed, went full Morbin time, the outlook for Madam Web movie, Craven, Venom 3, all Morbin time, like all three of those movies coming out this year, Sony probably not super confident they're going to make a dump truck of money on everything. Probably made them second guess their El Muerto plans like, why are we doing this character if we have access to over 900 characters? If it wasn't clear, because Sony has the Spider-Man rights in the movies, that gives them access to over 900 different characters, basically any character that appears in a Spider-Man comic, and there are a lot, a lot of Spider-Man comics. So they're like 899 more popular characters for them to pick from if they want to do more spin-off movies. Especially if they're trying to tie all these different movies together in a Sinister Six franchise, sort of reinvigorating what they were originally going to do back during the Andrew Garfield era. 
If it wasn't clear, way back when Andrew Garfield was still the main version of Spider-Man, his Amazing Spider-Man movies were happening, they were going to do Amazing Spider-Man 3. That original Amazing Spider-Man 2 post credit scene with the Sinister Six was meant to set up a completely separate movie. It wasn't meant to set up Amazing Spider-Man 3. It was actually supposed to set up a completely separate Sinister Six movie that would have turned into a Sinister Six trilogy with Spider-Man just appearing in it. And funny enough, while I was making this video, they dropped like another big Daredevil and Kingpin trailer talking about all the Defenders coming back into the MCU. Don't worry, I'll do a video about that eventually too. That's a really big deal, but it's a completely separate thing. But the person who created the Daredevil Netflix series, like the original Daredevil Netflix series, actually created the Sinister Six spin-off movie. He was going to start that big Sinister Six franchise for Sony. So what does this have to do with Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man winding up in a Bad Bunny music video? I like the theory that Sony let Bad Bunny use Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man here in his music video because it was part of his contract for the El Muerto movie. Like Sony canceled the movie for whatever reason his contract just gave him the ability to use that character anyway or less likely they let him use the character out of the goodness of their hearts. Like when does a major corporation like that give away rights to a billion dollar character for free? So I think them letting him use Spider-Man in his music video, pretty big music video too, is just recompense for canceling his El Muerto movie. Like, okay, we canceled your movie, so we'll let you use the character here briefly. You have to imagine originally they would intend to connect El Muerto to all these other Spider-Man movies like Venom 3, Kraven, that Morbius post credit scene, all the other characters in El Muerto's post credit scene. Like he meets one of them in his post credit scene, teasing a bigger Sinister Six crossover. There's a small part of me, too, that for a while when Sony was ramping up their output of all these Spider-Man spinoff movies, they were literally just trying to find anything that they could release. Like, what's a name that we can actually put on a marquee and actually build a trailer for? And they just assumed that because it was Spider-Man related, people would come to see it like they'll come if we build it. But in reality, no, like it actually has to be a good movie. We post all the Morbin Time memes, like it's a lot of good fun, but in reality, you have to imagine Sony planned on having full trilogies for all these different movies, including Morbius. Jared Leto even teased that they were going to do a sequel. It's Morbin Time, even though he was also kind of clowning on himself with the meme. Given what's been going down with the box office for these B-tier comic book movies the last couple of years, most of the lesser tier stuff has been tanking big time. It sounds like Sony has also pulled way, way back on their plans for this Spider-Man spinoff universe. There's a lot of reports also that they're trying to tie their Venom universe to Spider-Man 4, like Tom Holland's Spider-Man 4, in a much bigger way. I think the idea is they're hoping to legitimize their Venom spinoff movies even more by putting Tom Holland's Spider-Man in them way, way more than he's been in the past. Like there was a little crossover during Spider-Man No Way Home and during the Venom Let There Be Carnage post credit scene, but not that much crossover. Like they didn't actually appear on screen together. He was just watching him on TV and in Spider-Man No Way Home, he was just talking about Spider-Man. But for a little while, I talked about this in my deleted scenes video, there was actually a version of Spider-Man No Way Home where Venom was actually going to go to New York City like he talked about in the post credit scene. Like maybe I should go to New York City and talk to that Spider-Man. He goes to New York City and winds up fighting in that final battle at the Statue of Liberty against the other Sinister Six villains. That was meant to be their contingency plan if they didn't get Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man or Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man, but they did wind up saying yes to the movie. So early on, I think they changed their plans a bit. Like, okay, we don't need all these other characters too, because America Chavez was also supposed to be in the movie for a long time too. So they had all these different contingency plans. They were like five different versions of the movie if their Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield stuff didn't work out. Tom Holland even joked that when they started filming the movie, they had absolutely no idea what the third act was going to be. So like if you asked him when they started what he was going to be doing in the third act, he wouldn't be able to tell you like I haven't got that script yet. It's changing every single day. But I am really excited to see Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man come back in an actual real big way during Avengers 6 Secret Wars. He is supposed to come back during that movie. He's supposed to come back in a couple of other places, but I don't know exactly where that's going to be. Let me know in the comments if he comes back other places besides Secret Wars, where do you want that to be? I've done a couple other videos about Spider-Man 4, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 4, because they got so far along in pre-production. There was a ton of concept art, there were a ton of costumes made, there was even music that was done. Even though I don't think Sony is going to do Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man 4, there has been talk about them doing the story that would have taken place during that in other movies. 
Tobey Maguire said that was a big thing when he was working on Spider-Man No Way Home is that he didn't want the writers of the movie to expand too much about what he'd been doing since the events of his Spider-Man 3 all those years because they could always cover that in future movies. But if Sony really wants a Spider-Man to appear in all their spin-off movies like these upcoming Sinister Six movies that they're trying to do, I don't know that it would be Tobey Maguire or Andrew Garfield, even though I would love to see one of them come back for all those movies. It sounds like they just want to do a couple movies here and there, like maybe one or two movies. What they might do if Marvel is going to continue doing the MCU Tom Holland Spider-Man movies is that they'll introduce the live action Miles Morales and they'll just eventually use Miles Morales in a lot of these Sinister Six movies. I've already done a couple of videos about Sony talking about their live action Miles Morales movies. You can click here to learn about that and about Tom Holland's Spider-Man 4 and click here for my Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse teaser trailer video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.